How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Saturdays with Jim Valley, 1 p.m. Eastern. And Sundays with me, 6 p.m. Eastern. What's going on, everybody? We're here for another amazing week of pro wrestling talk. Uh, Obviously, if you're in the States, happy 4th of July weekend. I don't know if you guys are watching me. I'm, I'm like, I'm in my best of Hamptons wear right now. I'm getting ready. I've been lounging all weekend. I'm taking it easy. Uh, I, I, I love this, uh, this nice little break that I'm getting. And I've been enjoying it. And man, last night, a lot of action. Let's talk about this. We had UFC. I want to talk a little bit about UFC this week. I really do, but I'm going to talk about UFC because I got a great guest on. Matt Ryan's joining me. He knows the ins and outs of this stuff. And so, you know, I'm okay with it too. I just don't feel super confident talking about it every week. Money in the bank, obviously the big story here. Liv Morgan cashed in, won the money in the bank, cashed in the money in the bank. Champion on Ronda Rousey. Forbidden Door, great show. Blood and Guts, another great show. Rampage. Uh, Rampage, apparently their numbers are going to be higher this week. We'll find out about that. Also, a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, Io Shirai contract talks. It was interesting. Last night, Tony Khan and JR were at the UFC show. Also, Vince... Steph, Pat McAfee, Shane, uh, I was going to say Shane, not Shane, Hunter, and, uh, and, and Nick Khan were also there. I wonder if they interacted, shook hands or something. Uh, you know, there's a lot to talk about. When we come back from break, I'm going to bring in Matt Ryan with me to go over all of this. Because right now we're going into, you know, a hot period, really. SummerSlam is coming up. All Out is coming up. And everything else is coming up. We're going to be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. I'm bringing in my guest here, a regular here on the show, Matt Ryan from Catalyst Wrestling. What's going on, Matt? Nothing much, friend. Uh, happy uh, week off for you. Uh, glad to see you. Uh, glad to, you're better, it seems. Not really. Um, I, I, did, <laughs> I did hear Sergeant Slaughter and Gerald Briscoe were yeah, auditioning to push your wheelchair around. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to see some Stooges in the near future. Well, I got or my crutches just, here. I got my crutches. Uh, I've been I've been hobbling around in crutches. So it's it's not. I don't know if I I spoke about this last week, but I I have a slight fracture in my hip. I tore a bunch of stuff in my hip. Uh, it's not great. Uh, I'm able to kind of walk around a little bit, but the doctors told me I got to stay off my feet for a couple of weeks and kind of rehab this. So uh, I could sit like this. I'm OK. But the second I get up and I start moving around a lot, it uh, it, it starts becoming miserable. So uh, I got a, I got a long summer ahead of me. But listen, man, it is what it is. I like to have a Zen attitude. And I went into all these shows this weekend with a very Zen attitude. <laughs> and I, you guess what? I enjoyed all wrestling. I enjoyed a lot of the good stuff. There was a lot of bad stuff, too. Uh, you were allowed on the, to? I was allowed to. Yeah, I enjoyed <laughs> everything. It was fun. I had fun, man. Uh, let's talk about this, because I do want to touch on, on UFC a little bit, because it was a big big weekend in, in Vegas. I don't think a lot yep. of... If, if you're not a UFC fan, you don't know that this is a big UFC weekend uh, for them in Vegas, right? Every year. Yeah, it's International Fight Week. Uh, it's the biggest card of the year traditionally, right dead center in the middle of the year. Uh, there were two title fights last night. One was an absolute banger. The other one was Israel Adesanya uh, doing what he does best, uh, walking in, making someone look ridiculous, and walking home with the belt. Dude, he's so good. But, yeah, the last night's UFC card was tremendous. It's their biggest fight card of the year, which for some reason the WWE thought, ah, oh, let's run across the street at a football stadium. That yeah. won't hurt us. Nope. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, first of all, Israel Adesanya came out as the Undertaker, right? Yep. Uh, and I and I didn't see the preliminaries, but somebody came out to Shawn Michaels' theme on the preliminaries also. That was Jessica. Uh, uh, I know who it was, too. If you give me a second, I'll tell you exactly all right. who it was. You, you can come back to that. But uh, big, big weekend. Obviously, Money in the Bank was supposed to be held at Allegiant Stadium. Uh, they announced it a year ago at SummerSlam when uh, I was there. They announced it. I couldn't yep. believe that they were announcing the show. And I'm like, my God, it's going to be big. And. You know, every conversation I had with WWE for that over that past year was that this was going to be a big show. There were big plans to make this the fifth mega pay-per-view of the year, right? Because that's how they want this to feel. They don't want Money in the Bank to become just a regular, uh, you know, just another pay-per-view. They wanted to give it a big-time feel. They attempted it. And, you know, you could, you could say there were multiple catalysts that, no pun intended there, Matt Ryan, multiple catalysts uh, that led to this. Uh, one being, you know, not so great creative. 
two, the card was not, was kind of lackluster. It was a one card show, and really it was the money in the bank that was leading this. Uh, you had numerous injuries happen, but even even so, with all of it, it it, it really comes down to a lack of interest to go to Las Vegas and go to a stadium and, and fill up a stadium and, and watch a show. What do you think happened here? Why do you think they were they were not able to draw? At Allegiant Stadium, and you know, obviously it was a total yeah. sellout in that other building with twelve, thirteen thousand. But they wanted, you know, at least twenty-five to thirty in that stadium, maybe forty if they could. You're asking a lot of an audience that just dropped thousands of dollars to go to Mania, and in in a major city like Dallas, and then you're asking them to go to Nashville the same month, less than four weeks apart. Yeah. And I think that that's too much of an ask. If they want Money in the Bank to be the fifth pay-per-view, either you completely wholesale move SummerSlam to early July, or you move money and move Money in the Bank to September, or you have to get you have to have move Survivor Series later in the year, or you have to put Money in the Bank. And so you have to move money in the you bank move at some somewhere. I, I do think if, if they are going to do more stadium shows, which by uh, until, you know, until they had to move this, that was always the intention. I, I point blank. I was told that they, their intention is to run more stadium shows next year. As far as this year, too, they ran a bunch of stadium shows this if, year. And they're, con- they're, they're doing them internationally. Uh, I'm sorry to cut you yeah, off. But if they're doing it internationally. That makes sense. But if you're running, you know, the continental U.S., you have the big you have the big four and big fours make sense because it's quarterly. People can plan yeah. around them there and you can work them around holidays, which is why the initial idea behind money in the bank made all the sense in the world. But then you realize WrestleMania was just a few weeks ago, a few months ago. SummerSlam's in the same actual friggin month. Yeah. And you're running up against the biggest UFC card of the year in the same town. So you're really just shooting yourself in the foot. And yeah. the injuries and everything uh, really kind of took the wind out of the sails of this card. And no Roman Reigns, no Brock Lesnar. They're trying really hard to do what WCW did with Hogan in the mid-90s and not put Roman in the main event of every show and try to create some implicit value. But when you have a a show looking for a stadium, Mm -hmm. uh, you have a stadium looking for a show and not a show looking for a stadium. Yeah, that's absolutely absolutely right. But here's the thing, right? They're not looking to... This is a gauge of the business, right? They're not looking to sell at 60,000 people for a Money in the Bank. They, they no. understand that, that that's a difficult task to achieve. But, you know, if I told you, could they do 30,000? Yeah, I think with decent booking, obviously, easily they could do 30,000. And I think that was their mentality there. Anything over 25, 26 is a win for them due to the rate that they could get for the stadium. And obviously, that didn't happen for them for this and show. And I think that they needed to run one of their markets. Because running in the Northeast on this weekend would have made a lot more sense. Um, You know, I think experimenting with running baseball stadiums again, especially for a show like Money in the Bank, would be a real interesting pivot for them. They're running football stadiums. Yeah, but football's not running. Remember, you you can't do the baseball stadium. But you can't. No, you can work around it. You, you have teams that have extended road trips. You know and I know the Mets played most of June yeah. traveling around the Oregon Trail. So there are ways to <laughs> do it, and there are ways to partner with ballparks that, you know, they'll have a week or two where there's nothing going on. And I think it would be better for the WWE to run some, like the event that happened at Chase Field, the Royal Rumble. Yeah, It's a smaller park but they were able to get 50, 60,000 people in there, maybe 45,000 people in there, and it looked really impressive. Yeah, yeah. This card, uh, it, it, had, it had some ups and downs, uh, which we'll go into. Women's Money in the Bank started this. Liv Morgan defeated Asuka, Alexa Bliss, Raquel Rodriguez, Lacey Evans, Shotzi, and Becky Lynch. I tell you, this was a very sloppy match. I, I'm thrilled that, that Liv won. Friend of the shows. That's how I like to say. Um... But you know, Shotzi had a lot of missed spots. It was it was a train wreck of of a of a match. But the crowd was so into this. 
so so into this and live live one uh the money in bank fantastic bobby lashley defeated theory to win the united states title this plays a part later on in the show bobby lashley was over big time the crowd loved him what is he now three time u.s champion yeah two on this run one in his first run one on his first run yeah uh, Raw Women's Championship, Becky, uh, Bianca, Becky Lynch, I was going to say. Bianca Belair defeated Carmella to retain the title 7 minutes, 12 seconds. I did not love this match. It was, it was okay. Like, I, I, and to go back to the women's money in the bank, you had a lot of people in their first money in the bank or their first ladder match. Yeah. And it's a lot of people with a lot of conflicting styles, a lot of great personalities, and not, I don't think a terrible wrestler in the match, you know, it's just a lot of moving parts, a lot of stuff going yeah, on, and it that, gets more that difficult. That is really yeah. hard at, at any level. Like, even a traditional scramble match, once you throw five, six people in a ring with one another, I think this was the most people in a Money in the Bank match since the WrestleMania era Yeah, of, of Money in the Banks, where it felt like a small army was fighting to get the briefcase. But Yeah, there were seven this, people in that match. Jesus. That is a lot of humans. People. Yeah. Uh, undisputed tag team champions Usos defeated the Street Profits. I want to touch on this when we come back from break because there was a lot of of emphasis on uh, on this match, uh, the tag teams, the Street Profits, and where they're going. Montez Ford looks like a million bucks. I want to talk about that. He's becoming a big time body guy. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it. This dude, this dude is huge now. Yeah, you know, and they kept fan. talking about it. Uh, undisputed tag team champion Deuce has defeated the Street Profits, but there was a lot more to this here. Wrestling Observer Live. We're going to come back right after this to continue our conversation on Money in the Bank. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Happy 4th of July weekend to everybody. Andrew Zarian here, joined by Matt Ryan. Matt. Hello. Let's continue this conversation. Montez Ford. Yeah. Impressive, dude. Look at him. He's all jacked up. He's vast. Big, big chest. Look at the shoulders oh. on this guy. And he could fly. You know what? They. It, it's funny because they really, they don't really draw attention like that. Like when it's like, he got big. Yeah. He, he got he big. He's been putting in the work yeah. in the you gym. You know what? Singles run main event uh, body, man. That's how, that's how it works. This dude... On a singles run, I think everybody, for, for the longest time, ever since they came to the main roster to Street Profits, everybody's was like, Montez Ford is going to have a huge singles run. There's such upside to this dude. Charismatic, They're, great smile, great look, great body now, a high flyer. He's got everything you want in a top star in pro wrestling. He can yeah. talk. He's got an incredible athletic skill set. He is raw. Like, you, you can still see he's finding his footing and he keeps getting better and he keeps getting smarter inside the ring. And yeah. my issue is if you break them up, what the heck we've seen this with great tag teams yeah. over the past few years. We've seen it, you know, going back to the Dudleys in the early two thousands, you break them up. You, you see one guy as the guy, but how do you position him as the guy yeah. between now and the end of the year when you have, so much bottlenecking at the top of the card for the WWE. You have Lashley, you have Drew McIntyre, you have, you know, possibly Tyson Fury coming in. You have Theory with the... Hey, with Jake the Paul. Beat. Jake Paul. Jake Paul's in there now. Like, you have so many dudes who are going to be eating up so much TV time as a singles. What do you, what do, you do dude, with a Montez simple. Ford? Now? Simple. Simple, dude. Add a fourth and fifth hour. <laughs> Right? Isn't that what everybody wants to see? <laughs> I can't even do it. I'm so I, sorry. I honestly think that they should turn the third hour into com like they were going to do with the third hour a couple of years ago. Third hour Not was going to be more adult. It was going to be more in your face. I know, but they did it for like two weeks, and then they, they did Shane McMahon's basement fighting. I liked Raw what Underground. What did they call it? I liked the concept. <laughs> you know I liked what? Can, the I, concept. can we talk about this? Like, first of all, what a, what a bizarre thing, right? Shane McMahon is running a fight club with, like, you know, uh, da go go dancers and, and deviants and, and people smoking cigars and people was, fight. I thought it was and, cool. Like, like I thought York. it was all right. It wasn't bad. It had a great look. It had a great look. It had a great aesthetic. I was a big fan of Raw Underground. 
But when <laughs> when you take a look at Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, I really think they should have put the titles on them last night. I think it, it could have led into giving the bloodline some holes between now and SummerSlam. You need the element of outside of it being Brock Roman 622. And I'm not complaining because I think the match is going to be amazing. But you look at it and it's like there needs to be some sort of showing ass here. There needs to be some sort of like holes in the bloodline to create yeah. some sort of dissent and tension to show that Brock could win this match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where are we now? Hang on. Let's see. Where were we on this card? Uh, oh, the cryptic teaser. There was a there was a cryptic uh, spooky tease video where Ooh, it spooky. showed gold medals uh uh glass taped glasses a license plate that read latino heat armband similar to the what the hardys wear uh, a crow so i guess edge is coming back that was his little or teaser raven. here or who or raven <laughs> it's raven dude Got another run in him <laughs> uh smackdown women's champion championship ronda rousey defeated natty natalia to retain in 12 minutes and 33 seconds the story here was that you know they they, they Natty trained Ronda. They've worked yeah. tons together. Um, I thought it was fine. It was a very choreographed match. It looked it. It felt it. They were okay. Ronda Ronda lost something on the second run, man. Uh, there is there is a she, a she lack. Doesn't wanna, yes. she doesn't want to be there. It, she it, doesn't want to be in that position. She wants to be a heel. She wants to be a bitch. Like she wants to be hated. Because she could, be, she could be she could be a neutral where she's still a badass and she does what she does. You know, the smiley baby face thing sucks for her because that's not yeah. natural for her. She that's not who she is. I, I just feel like, you know, there, there's something lacking now. She just became one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that is the biggest problem here. When you become one of them, then nothing matters. Ronda Rousey defeated Natalia. However, big moment at the end, right? The big story was Ronda's knee was bad. It went out. She had a big leg problem, knee hurting her. Uh, her knee is, is in pain. She's holding her knee, holding her knee. Liv Morgan's music hits. The building explodes. She runs out a million miles an hour, hands in the briefcase, cashes in. Ronda immediately ankle lock on Liv. That crowd is losing it, booing, 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 angry. Liv reverses it with a roll-up. Actually, I'm sorry. Liv kicks her in the knee, rolls her up, wins the title. Ronda at the end handed her the title, congratulated her. Uh, this is the fourth time out of five women's Money in the Bank matches that someone cashed in within 24 hours. Also, every person that has won the Money in the Bank, the women's Money in the Bank, has won the title. That is so, an interesting MacGuffin to it. Very uh, interesting. 85% you know, I think for the men's too. Is it? Uh, I, th I, I think I heard that stat last night. Who failed? Uh, I, Damien and Sandow. Now, yeah, Damien Sandow failed. Um, who else? There, there's a couple in there. Uh, I feel Baron like there Corbin. Was like Baron Corbin, okay. Maybe. Uh, a couple more, maybe. I can't remember. Uh, men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Seth Rollins. Drew McIntyre. Oh, Cena had a failed cash-in, I believe. Yes, yes. Cena. Thank you to our producer, MG, for that tidbit. Uh... Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Riddle, Sami Zayn, Sheamus, Madcap Moss, Omos, Riddle, and TBD turned out to be Austin Theory. So going back to Monday, that promo that Austin cut on, a uh, Theory cut on Cena was fantastic. Very it aggressive. Was a really, good promo. really good promo. They did a fantastic job with that. Theory won the ladder match. Has the money in the bank now. After the show, Baron jumped the rails and beat up Pat McAfee and gave him an end of days. This is setting up the SummerSlam match. Accepted it. Uh, by the way, Pat McAfee was selling the neck injury at UFC. He was wearing he had, an Andy Kaufman neck brace at UFC was, 276. I was going to say a Vince McMahon 1993 steroid trial neck brace, but right. that's cool. He didn't have, that and he was holding a drink. He was holding a drink, yeah. Um, so... Well, let's talk about this theory money in the bank they, they they're very high on him man and, and you know from day one when when i when i heard that paul Heyman had got his you know eyes on theory uh from people at evolve i knew that this guy was going to get actually to yeah. be honest the first time i saw him at evolve i was like okay he he's definitely made for wwe this guy 
he, 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 yeah, he, he has the look, charismatic, good body, you know, like they, they could do something with him. I didn't know I didn't expect it to be this quick, but they are really giving him the I mean, there's a lot of comparison to the John Cena treatment here. What do you think? I I think that what we saw over the last two years is him being trained to be a top guy. The cup of coffee on Paul Heyman Raw, RIP IP to the Paul Heyman Raw era. Uh, I personally loved it. But when you look at what he did with the way in NXT playing the complete comic foil, understanding all sides of it, and he got a master class, you know, a speed run through the WWE to get to this point. Yeah. I can see a WrestleMania main event, a double bill. I can see it being Roman and Rock, non title, and Theory versus Cena. Cena getting his record-breaking title at Mania this year. In, yeah, I mean, it depends. It, you know, it, it depends here because I, I, they need to be careful with Theory. I, I definitely think that he is one of those guys. You know, he they're they're, they're building that 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 chess set for them, right? For the next yeah. ten years, they have Braun Breaker. Obviously, we know he's going to be one of those guys. Now we have Theory. We know he's going to be in that mix here. But who else is there? Riddle. I mean, okay, but he's a little older. But, like, they're starting to build those 20-year-old guys. Yeah, yeah and they're, they're, they're looking at a lot of different options here. Listen, for, look, think about it this way, right? Like, I remember when Randy Orton got that title. Everyone was like, my God, he's, it's too early for him. You don't want to put a title on a young kid. You can't get the, 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 the regular fans, like the hardcore fans, the P1s, to invest in a 23-year-old kid. Your champion needs to be a little bit more... Weathered needs to be a little bit more grizzled. Uh, you got to see the struggle in them. You can't get this kid over, right? But look at Randy Orton, 20-year career. Brock Lesnar, 20-year career. John Cena, 20 year Every one of these guys that they made, they got 20 years out of. Yep. I'm not saying that's the way to book, but I'm saying in WWE's way, that works for them. Theory now, you got Theory and you got, you got two of them. Do You need like a couple more and you're good. And when you completely assassinated the territories and for the last 20 years, you really had minimal competition in way of impact and outside of building, they had to build their own stars. They had yeah. to, and they had to do it really quickly because the turnover in the WWE from the attitude era to the quote unquote ruthless aggression era was what a year and a half less than yeah yeah and who knows when the that turnover is going to come for this generation against the the current generation now like how long is we know Sheamus Drew McIntyre Roman Reigns Seth Rollins they're yeah. going to be there maybe another five ten years but Roman's always a question mark because he could go to Hollywood Listen, I think a lot Rolling. of these guys are a question mark. A lot of these guys could go. A lot of these guys could say, I'm done, you know, they, and because the money is big now. These guys are making yeah. big money. When the money is that big, you don't need to do this for, you know, 50, five years past what you should be doing. I think there's a lot of interesting conversations to be had here with the future of WWE and how they're building things and, and what their, you know, what their product is going to be. A lot of celebrity driven stuff. I think theory fits what they want. Uh, I'm curious how this falls into i'm saying what they want i'm not saying what what yeah. the positive result's gonna be but listen guys we gotta go to break a lot to talk about still forbidden door wrestling observer live Andrews aaron here we'll be right back right after this stay tuned wrestling observer live Andrews Zarian here matt you gotta you know people don't realize you're you're a carny wrestling promoter <laughs> thanks yeah thanks buddy yeah you owe me some money you owe me lunch <laughs> You do owe me a lunch. That is true. Oh, you, oh, you want to start comparing who owes who? <laughs> we have a lot to talk Robert. about today. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to dwell on, on Forbidden Door. It was a week ago. But what did you think of the show, man? Um, I thought it was a great representation of what this relationship can be. You know, I, uh, I was ready to give you a plug here. Okay. Very unprofessional. <laughs> and I just took it away from you. You did. You slid. I, I'm a pro. I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna yell at you in the break. <laughs> Man, three plugs. Yeah, but, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to see what you were gonna do if you were gonna drive it back in. No, I want. I want to hear about the show. You got a show coming up here in uh, New York. 
Yep. Uh, in Brooklyn, Chilo's Greenwood. It's an outdoor show. Taco trucks. We've got margaritas. We've got everything you would want for a hot summer night in Brooklyn. It's going to be live July 16th, which also is my birthday. So oh, come birthday celebrate show. my birthday. Thank you. Yeah, it's a birthday show because I'm a mark for myself. But Catalyst Wrestling presents Sabotage. Tickets are $25. And if you're wondering why $25, our co-main event, Jack Evans versus Colby Carino. For the first time ever, we have a triple main event. So it's Jack Evans versus Colby Carino. If you're a wrestling fan, you want to see that match. Darius Carter, who's been lighting up the independent wrestling fire. world. We'll be defending the Catalyst Wrestling Championship against Akira. If you're a GCW or ICW NHB fan, you definitely know who Akira is. Uh, he is a part of our roster full-time now after moving to New York, so he might walk out Catalyst Wrestling Champion on July 16th. We have also our third co-main event. It is the NWA Junior Heavyweight Championship. Homicide will defend against NCAA and NYU wrestling legend, Ray Jazz, that one is a part of our triple main event. We also have the Vic, uh, Victor v Benjamin, the Savage Gent, managed by the King of the Dot Battle Rap Champion, Real Deal, going up against an innovator and the Catalyst Wrestling Freestyle Champion, Ghost Shadow. We also have Black G's from the NWA, Joker, and a whole lot more. Tickets are available at CatalystWrestling.com. That is CatalystWrestling.com. You can also watch Catalyst Wrestling on Pluto, Tubi, Gas Digital Network, and also on YouTube. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I have to pay my rent. Can somebody can somebody dub the, the, uh, the Crockett uh, music? <laughs> <laughs> Where, like when Tony Schiavone used to read all the towns that they were going to, can somebody dub that over? <laughs> Matt giving all Wrestling his plug for his this, this Saturday night at Shilo's Greenwood in there New York City. Catalyst Perfect. Wrestling presents a night of live pro wrestling. Fantastic! I'm rip that off and make that the next YouTube promo. Exactly. There you go. Take take that idea. Uh, Forbidden Door. <laughs> I want to get your thoughts on this. This was a pro wrestling show. Uh, yeah. it, there was no fluff to this. This was all a lot of wrestling. What did you think of the show overall? As I said before, I think it was a great example of what the relationship between the two companies can be. The injury bug, timing, uh, the, the world we live in right now uh, with a lot of the restrictions on travel uh, really mucked up the platonic ideal of what this show could be. But I still think it was a great show for diehard wrestling fans. Um, I love it, man. I, I, it yeah. was it was a really fun show, even, even with all the setbacks, dude. Even with all the setbacks, yeah. um, there were a couple things that I took away from this. Okay, and I want to see if you took it away. First of all, FTR this only elevated them even more, right? They this are show. they are one of the three best in wrestling right yes. now. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Across I agree with you. Very much enjoy the act. Two, there were two people that got over here. Shooter, mm -hmm. right? They did a great job at highlighting how amazing he is. And it was another person. You want to guess who that other person was? In my opinion. That that King that Kong really Bundy. King Kong Bundy got elevated on the show? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh Clark Connors. Yeah, no, they did a great job in basically setting up who's going to be the guys that come over next or the cornerstones yeah. of New Japan and their relationship with the U.S. for the next few years. Uh, I want to see what happens next. I, I honestly want to see them run back Starcade 95. I want to see a best of World Cup series, bring that back as a pay-per-view because I would love to see something like that happen. Yeah. You and think this will be a regular thing for them to do this? I think I think them doing it annually makes the most sense. Not not um, not twice a year or more than that. No, I think if they're going to move to a six pay per view a year model, so they're gonna that's interesting, right? You said that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what show I was on when I said this, but I mean, you know, listen, you know, you know a lot about my circle of of friends that I have, right? Uh, I think yes. we have mutual friends in this too, but someone that we know mutually uh, mm -hmm. over at at uh, the Turner side of thing, right? The Warner Media side. I mean, just in passing, he, he it wasn't. Uh, you know what? I'll put out a tweet with exactly what he said to me, but it was pretty much like, "Oh, we'd love for them to do more shows, right? That that the, they they want more shows. Uh, on uh, Warner Media wants more pay per views from AEW. Yeah, 
uh that because that's pretty the, the, the just uh, pretty much exactly like four pay-per-views a year is not what they want more than that not that they're like forcing them to but they would they would love for them to do more and and we are starting to get that i think this is one of those right doing this forbidden door yeah. show is another one i i think adding those ring of honor shows which it's fascinating uh that ring of honor announcement came just days after i was told this so this may be playing a part in them and this is going to be a test for BR Live with AEW and Ring of Honor to see how they could draw this. Uh, can they do 100,000 buys on BR, uh, you know, on pay per view? It's going to be on BR Live. It's yes, just it going to be on BR Live. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, well, I don't know if there's a pay per view provider here. Maybe MG, our producer, could kind of get in our ear and tell us or text me. But I know that it is on BR Live. So that was part of that, that conversation that they had a couple weeks ago, I'm sure. With the mm. Warner Media guys, where Tony was extremely, and you know, he was thrilled about it and how they were going to do it. Um, you know, now we know that Ring of Honor will be on BR Live. Does that mean they are close to getting some sort of distribution with Warner Media for Ring of Honor? It would be very interesting to see how that plays out. Because do you put it on TBS? Do you run it as a set? Do they bring back the Saturday 605 concept with know, Ring man. of Honor? Something. Like, they could do something, but I, something's in the works here. And, and I, I don't know. I don't know anything about a pay-per-view, like an announcement happening at the pay-per-view, but I wouldn't be shocked if there was some sort yeah. of announcement to happen at the pay-per-view. But to kind of touch on this, uh, I thought, you know, I, I want to, I thought Forbidden Door was a great show. I expect more pay-per-views uh, next year. I expect this to be another pay-per-view. Uh, this this was a lead in for Blood and Guts, which turned out to be another really good show. Orange Cassidy, by the way, has I've I've done a 180 on this dude. Not that I didn't like him. I, I thought he was a great comedy act. I thought he was a fun act. Now I I could see him more as a serious act. This dude is really over. Uh they gotta yeah. they gotta just run with this now. Came out to Jane by Starship Trooper. Uh Starship Troopers, Jesus Christ. Yes, by Starship Troopers. You know what? You know what? I, you know why? I got Starship Troopers on my mind. I was watching clips on YouTube earlier. That I've I've been doing the same thing with, with Starship Troopers. Jefferson with some... Starship. Yes. Um, were they Jefferson Starship or were they Starship? I think Jefferson. they were Jefferson Starship. Jefferson. Jefferson Starship at the time. Oh, just Jefferson. Yeah. Jefferson Starship. Uh okay. we got a Christian Cage uh promo. Uh, Jungle Ooh. Boy, I'm sorry to your your entire family isn't dead. And then he corrected himself. He goes, except for your moms. And then the crowd Yo. goes, oh. And then it was a it was a whole you know they were just burning each other back and forth. Uh, he a Luchasaurus comes out, black gear, new mask, black pants, no more green. Uh, FTR with Danhausen versus Max Caster and the Gun Club. I thought this was a fun match. Uh, we yeah, got I Jade Cargill and uh, and Lay Layla Gray. Layla Gray, yeah. Layla Blood Gray. and guts. Okay, let's talk about this match. What did you Ooh, think? Ooh, the lolly! I loved it. Um, it's the evolution of War Games that the match needed. Do you think um, this is better than the NXT? The best of NXT War Games was this better than that? No. Um, but I like I like this match presentation over the w NXT War Games presentation because I, at the heart of it, I am a fan of the old school style of War Games. Like that, that is the version I love. That's the version, obviously, I grew up with. But that one to me feels more intense. The penalty box stuff—it's great for turns. It's a great device. But when you have that level of chaotic energy at ringside. You don't know what's going to happen. You have the moments like Ty Conti trying to put the, the yeah. rubbing alcohol into the cage. You have things like that. The Medusa shoe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Russell 192. Like those things like that makes so much more sense to me. Paulie's Paulie's uh, phone, you know? Yeah. There's so many things yeah. with that match that having everybody at ringside or having that frenetic energy. We got to um, weed a people chant. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. Uh, we didn't even talk about the fact Claudio debuted at, at Forbidden yes, Door defeating Zack Sabre Jr., but that match, you know, obviously Santana blowing his knee out uh, really put a damper on things, and you, you hate to see that, especially, you know, for me, I've known Santana since 2011, 
uh, like right when I got in the business, uh, we, he trained at the school I got my, I got, I broke in at, yeah. uh, but it's insane to me that this went down the way it did. And, uh, the match just how good is Eddie Kingston? Oh man, he's great. He's great. He, he's such a, a, a refreshing act, unpredictable, unorthodox. He's so good. He, and that's a big story. Him and Cesaro will be the story moving forward, which I love. And I think that this is going to end up with Eddie Kingston as AEW world champion. I wow. love what they're doing with the Blackpool Combat Club. I think that AEW is positioning themselves to grow really well and start converting some of the old school fans who yeah. might not like some other aspects of the programming. I think that if you show them this match, you know, with limited exception, uh, they'll actually love it. Yeah, I, I think I think they did a great job with this. I had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, the big story here, obviously, Kingston and uh, Kingston and uh, and Cesaro, uh, Claudio. That's the big story here. But guys, we're running out of time here. We'll be right back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarin here. Final segment of the show. Hey guys, listen. During the break, I was our producer was fact checking me, and did I hallucinate that there was an announcement that Ring of Honor is going to be on BR Live, uh, the pay per view? I, I so. feel like I've, I, I, I may have saw this in my visions, like I tend to do every night. I've seen it in a dream. <laughs> I, I mean, Matt, I, did, am, I, am I losing my mind here? I, I, listen, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, I, uh, maybe it's like a false that. memory. Maybe, maybe it's a it false could, memory. Maybe I got maybe, Mandela effect. Maybe I got Mandela affected. Yeah, I don't know. I could have sworn to you that there was some sort of uh, announcement. I, can't, I don't think anybody told me this. I think it was like, a, 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 like I saw it. Maybe it, I'm it could have been we'll in the out. press release, but there is no information right now on where to watch the pay-per-view outside of buying a ticket to go into the Songus Center, which is just a fun sentence to say. That's Heading down to the Songus Center. Yeah. Uh, how many people in that building? 5,000 they could fill? Uh, I think about I think it's about five to 8,000. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big building. Let's see what they can do there. Yeah. Guys, this was a lot of fun this week. I had a ton of fun with Matt. I had a ton of fun with you guys. Uh, we're going to be back next week, obviously. Talking all things professional wrestling. Uh, if you're watching this, uh, give us a follow. At Andrew yeah. Zarian on Twitter, if you listen to this on the radio, you're watching this on, on YouTube or Twitch, wherever you may be watching it. Andrew Zarian on Twitter. Where can people follow you? You can follow me on Twitter at Matt Ryan Yells. That is Matt Ryan Yells. But more importantly, you can follow Catalyst Wrestling at Catalyst Wrestle. That is at Catalyst Wrestle on Twitter, and also you can buy tickets for Sabotage live in Brooklyn on July 16th with a 7 p.m. bell time. Tickets are only $25 online, 30 at the door at CatalystWrestling.com. That is CatalystWrestling.com. Be there! Guys, we are out of time this week. Thank you, everybody, for watching this, listening to this. We'll be back next week, everybody. Ta-ta.